No! Ugh. Hi, I'm Christopher and this is Made by Chance. I made this flip top tool stand about four to five years ago and shortly after I made it my father-in-law really liked it and wanted one himself. So I've had it on the list of things to make for the last four years or so and gift it to him at some point but I just haven't gotten around to it. Well, he's about to retire in a month, and I figured what better time to give somebody some shop furniture than when they're about to retire and actually start using the shop a bit more. So follow along with me today as I make another one of these flip top tool stands and actually make some improvements over my version that I have here. The frame of the flip top cart was made entirely out of two by fours with butt joints and a lot of wood glue and pocket holes. I'm not gonna belabor this too much. It's pretty straightforward. You can see exactly how it's made. Let's go ahead and get to the flip top itself. So in order for me to determine the dimensions of the pieces of wood I need to make the flip top, we have to first talk about two things that I desire. One, I want to install a switch on the front sides of the flip top. And two, I want the top of the flip top station to be the same height as the sides of the flip top station. So what does this all mean for our dimensions? Well, we got two sides of the station with a pipe running through them and we want the flip top piece to have the same height as the sides. That means the thickness of our flip top box needs to be two times the dimension from the center line of the pipe to the top of our sides. And because I know when I made the frame, I put the hole for the pipe in the dead center of a two x four, the thickness of my flip top needs to be the width of this two x four, which is three and a half inches. So now let's talk about how the switch affects this. We know that the box itself is gonna have a top and a bottom and then four sides to actually house all the wiring. And we know that on two sides, the sides that the pipe's not running through, we're gonna install switches. So going back to my crude drawing, we have something like this from the front view. Now I know that this dimension of my junction boxes is just under two and three eighths inches. Therefore, the minimum width of my side pieces has to be two and three eighths inches. Now this is important because this means that I cannot use three quarter inch plywood for the top and bottom surfaces of this flip top box. And that's because we know that the maximum thickness for this whole thing can be three and a half inches. And then we subtract away two and three eighths inches for the junction box. What's left, we divide by two to give us the maximum thickness for the top and bottom pieces to maintain the three and a half inches of overall thickness. Therefore, because I come up with something less than three quarter inches, I'll be using half inch plywood for the top and bottom pieces. So for the 12 of you that stuck around through all that math, you're my people, let's have a beer sometime. But for those that skipped ahead, well, welcome back. Now let's build this thing. So the first thing I did after I had all my pieces cut out was on the side pieces that the pipe would run through. I found the center of those pieces by drawing two intersecting lines from opposing corners. And then I drilled the hole out. All right, so I'm about ready to glue up the actual flip top. Um, I got all the side pieces cut. I got the holes drilled in the support pieces that are gonna go around the uh, the piece of pipe that's actually going to rotate. So what I'm going to do is make some pocket holes on one side of all of these side pieces and go ahead and put some glue and screw them down to one side of the flip top station. Then I'll get all my wiring set up and then I'll screw on the other side or the back side of the flip top station on the top of all this. Well, it did not take me long to run into my first mistake. I already glued and screwed down the front and back pieces of the flip top box, but I forgot to cut a spot for the junction boxes that would house the switches. Instead of trying to pull this up and re-glue it down, I decided to just use a Sawzall to cut the notches out now. I just had to go really slow and take it easy not to get too much tear out, but the cover, the faceplate cover for the switches is gonna hide any tear out that I get from using that Sawzall. Now, while I'm mounting the switches on the front and rear facing sides, I was still going to mount the outlets that the tools would be plugged into on the top and bottom surfaces just to make it more convenient to plug those tools in. I also want to make sure to maximize the amount of area that I have to be able to mount the tools. So I made the locations for these outlets as close as I could to one of the corners on the surfaces. Oh, crap. Oh, man, that's a big mistake. Oh, that's a critical mistake. Oh, God. What? Oh, God. Well, I cut this piece, flipped it over, and I realized this is not gonna work because that box on the front side now interferes with where this box should have to hang down below it. 
So I've decided the solution is going to be just flip this and I'll use it like this. This wasn't the prettier side. It's got all these knots and some chipped out wood. Um, and I gotta erase some writing on it, but it can easily mount over here or underside um, with no problem. And so he'll have an outlet on the right side for one and an outlet on the left side for the other. All right, so it's time to actually put the flip top part onto the base. Uh, so I'm gonna do that by kind of feeding this pipe in while holding the flip top part in place. Uh, once it's put all the way together, I'll take a couple clamps and put them along the frame to keep it from rotating as I wire everything up. So one more thing and then I promise we'll get to the wiring. I went ahead and drilled a screw that attaches this middle support to the pipe itself by just putting a small hole in the center of that pipe. And this is gonna help make sure that the pipe rotates whenever the uh, flip top rotates. And as I rotate it here, you can see that there is a hole on the side of the pipe on the very top side of this video here. And that's where the wire that's gonna come in to bring power to the box is going to be fed through. And so if the pipe was separate from the flip top box itself, that wire could probably rub on the pipe and wind up fraying through and shorting out. So by fixing these two together, you'll prevent that from happening. So this metal box that I'm installing here right now is actually what's gonna split the incoming power into two different circuits, feeding each side of the flip top box. Now I used Romex to run all this, so I'll wind up having one piece of Romex going from this box to each switch. All right, so you could use uh, staples, wire staples or Romex staples. Um, but I don't have any that are shallow enough. This is only half inch plywood. I have like big one inch long staples. So I just cut a few pieces of wood that are fairly small um, and they're only like a uh, five millimeter underlayment and just some scrap I had. Put a couple holes in it and I'll put a couple screws in it and I'll use that basically to hold down the wire. This isn't really necessary. <clears throat> I'm just doing it so that the wire doesn't rattle around whenever you're actually trying to um, move the, the flip top. Um, so it doesn't have to be anything too solid. You definitely don't want to go through the plywood, um, but just something to hold it in place. So that's perfect. <clears throat> All right, so now I need to go from the switch to the outlet for this one. And the outlet for this one is going to be at the back. So I need to run from the switch under here to the back outlet. All right, so that's all the wiring on one side. So now I'll do the same sort of thing. I'll run another wire from this junction box to the switch over here, and then wire from the switch to the outlet at the back side of the other side. And don't forget to use your janky Romex hold down class screws staple thing that I came up with, whatever. Once all the wiring was in place, it was time to actually wire it up. So in the junction box, since this is all new work, I just put all the whites together. I put all the blacks together. And then for the power cable coming in, I had a red and I just used that for my grounds. As far as wiring up the switches, I'm just using single pole switches. So it's pretty straightforward, but just follow the instructions for whatever switches you purchase. All right, so I got our plug made up and it's plugged in and right now I'm getting zero volts with the switch off. As soon as I turn the switch on, we are getting 120 volts just as we should be. So I've checked the other side and it's good as well. So everything looks good electrically. I don't see any reason that I can't put this top on now. After I installed the top, I used a trim router with an eighth inch roundover bit just to knock off all the sharp corners and make sure that the top can rotate really smooth. But you always gotta be careful when you're using a router on plywood. Shut up. 
Well, this wasn't a huge deal, but I did stop using the router after this and I just used sandpaper to knock down all the edges. Now keep in mind that the tools that will be installed on this flip top station are probably going to generate a lot of dust and debris. So you're going to want the covers and enclosures for the switches and the outlets to do their best to seal up really tight and prevent any dust from getting in there causing a short or a failure of the equipment. All right, so I'm ready to mount the latches, which are basically going to be barrel bolts mounted to the front or the, the front and the back sides of the flip top. And so what I'm gonna do is actually just mount the two on the front because generally speaking, you should only have to lock two of these and the thing won't move at all. So I'm gonna put two on the front and then I'm gonna flip it. And based on where this piece is that's fixed, I'm gonna locate the other two on the other side. Once those are done, then I can go to the back side and mount the support that's on the frame. last thing I did was build out and install a drawer for the bottom of this flip top cart. I'm not going to go into all the details here. I am planning on releasing a video showing more details about how to make a simple drawer box, but I did run into one last problem that I'll just leave you hanging. You'll have to see the other video to see what it was and how I solved it. I had just a few minor items left such as installing this shelf on the bottom, installing the side paneling, and installing casters to allow this thing to roll around and it was done. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Happy retirement! Wow. That is cool. <laughs> Yo. So show us how it works. Well, it works a lot better than it does. The entire time he was making this, he was like, can I keep I this know. one? <laughs> so, wow. That is it in. so slick. And you got power for this outlet here, and then when you flip it, power for this outlet oh here. Oh my god. And then oh, you got three bolt awesome. extension cord, pegboard on the sides, and a drawer, and blocking casters, so yeah. wow. you can make it pretty easy wherever you want. Well, I think he liked it. This was a project that was just plagued with the mistakes all the way through it, but in the end, it's a really nice flip top, and I'm serious, I might make one of these for myself to replace my old beat up one. All in, if you had no materials to start this project with, it would be about $250 for everything. You can check out the description below for the breakdown of that pricing. If you wanna see that video on how I made the drawer box and the problems I ran into with it, click the video at the top of your screen. Otherwise, I got another video queued up for you at the bottom. And until next time, take a chance and make something.